My name is David Henson. I'm from Austin, Texas, Lakeway area. I'm 52 years old, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do for a living? Um, I've been in construction most of my life, but I call myself an entrepreneur. Okay. I have uh, a construction company that I started in 2009, and uh, prior to that, I had executive positions in two different corporations that were in construction as well. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> basically started... When I, right, when I was going to college, I learned how to build some stuff, and I could make really good money, so I started just making the money instead of spending my wheels going to college is what I thought at the time. So what do you bring in a year right now? On a good year, my company does, you know, a million and a half. You know? Um, I, you know, since I've been here in Austin, things have been different. I came here and paralleled my company with another company, and so during that period, we were doing, you know, 450 to 6, and basically not collecting a lot of profit. It was kind of a give and take type of situation. Mm -hmm. So my company wasn't maximizing itself at the time, but we were pretty busy. Um, and what does this company do exactly? Well, my construction company is basically a construction service company. We, uh, I, I framed framer by Forte. So framing houses was always a part of the game, but we moved into remodeling and I'm more or less a residential expert on homes and so I do a lot of consulting work um, with builders and architects around town. And by the way, if you want to help construct this company, I'm really trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and we're not too far away. So please consider subscribing if you end up liking this episode. I had to throw that in there. I don't blame you. I would. Um, you know, the construction company was something that kind of came on and it's something I had to do. Um, and it worked really good. I came here to Austin, you know, at the end of 16, the beginning of 17. And basically had a life-changing event and what happened my wife passed away wow and uh it was a, it was a pretty big blow it wasn't yeah. something that we were not expecting we weren't necessarily surprised although uh, she'd been sick for 17 years so it was something mm -hmm. that we kind of knew was coming we weren't expecting it that day so it was a, a leveling event and uh it just kind of left me flat and I'm really sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm not saying that stuff because I'm looking for sympathy. Mm -hmm. I, I, my wife was a wonderful person, and I always said that God gave her that because nobody else could take it. And uh, she dealt with it well, and she lived a good life. So, good. <clears throat> you know, last year, a lot of things happened. My stepson, um, he passed away. We had the COVID. And um, <clears throat> because of that, well, due to that, we had some things. And bottom line to this, came back here in, in September. Uh, was basically no work here in Austin at the time for us, at least uh, starting flat. And I'd had this machine, so starting two companies from cold start was quite a freaking feat. So it's left me at a point where I haven't really had an income for about four months. And uh, four, wait, okay, wait, four months as of like right now, four months? I would say so September, October, November, mm -hmm. December. So you must have money sitting somewhere to survive, right? Um, well, you know, I had some money and, um, of course I had some credit. Um, mm. yeah, yeah, it's always a good time. But the good thing is I didn't have a lot of credit, um, credit cards and stuff. I probably got less than $10,000 in credit card debt for sure. And the oh. debt, the debts and stuff, we can go over that too. I'm, I really can't wait to talk to you about it. Cause maybe I know you can help me with it. Once I'm through all this. I'll but, probably have a heart attack first, but then, <laughs> then I might be able to help with it. <laughs> well, and that's the whole thing is, you know, I, during the time I was doing a project in Lavernia, that whole eight months, you know, it was kind of a steady pay, but it wasn't good money. And, and in the end, I didn't get paid what I was supposed to get paid. And it left me in a position that I wasn't uh, in. So savings got spent. Uh, um, I walked into an opportunity here with this new business because I, I found a great place to rent for our new business. And I couldn't pass it up. I walked in, talked to the lady, told her my story, gave her a $500 deposit. And two weeks later, I'm heartbroken and crushed as I'm calling her to tell her that I've got to cancel it and to keep my $500 because I'm not going to be able to do it. I just don't see it. And, you know, we've got to get this so business So this business open. was the nutrition business? This is the new business, the ultimate red light business. Okay, so this was not construction? No, no. Okay. No, sir. Um, and this business, I actually formed a corporation in February this year. Okay. Is this the one that we have here? Yes, it's all, that's his, this is CTC Remodeling Construction. This is okay. construction right here. Yeah. And because li literally the construction company, it kind of has a life of its own. You know what I'm saying? So I, wouldn't, I wasn't focusing energy on this. 
the minute I had the opportunity to move into this building, this lady basically told me I could move in, just pay her when I had made some money. So to me, that's a that's an open door. Okay. It's, what was the rent? Twenty five, twenty five hundred okay. a month with a twenty five hundred dollar deposit, and I think the, plus the electric bill is one hundred fifty a month or something like that. <laughs> so you know. Yes, it was an investment. Yes, was it risky? Yes, I had to go for it because I wasn't going to get that opportunity to be right there where, where my plan was with my construction company to make it happen, right? Because I wanted this future for myself. So I, I need to loop back to today. So just I want to create some kind of financial picture before we go in and look at some of the documents. So we went from a business bringing in $1.5 million to like around 600000 but now four months of no income. So I'm just... So, you know, with CTC... Explain the decline. It was, it was CTC, you know, the, the company was started in 2009. And I came right out of the gate swinging. And we did really well. We were doing, you know, 750. I mean, we were, we were rocking. And for most of the time, I mean, the company basically did what it was supposed to do. And I was kind of traveling around the country racing motocross with my son. So... <clears throat> Kind when, of when did it start going down? <laughs> when did it end? Because you're not doing it right now, correct? No, I mean, I am actually. I you actually are, just okay. signed a contract this week and we're doing, and I do consulting work, you know, um, for different people. And it doesn't pay like normally, you know, I would go, let's say, if I had a larger model project, you know, if I paid $260,000, you know, I would get an additional deposit for 30% down, you know what I'm saying? Draws upon. Mm -hmm. So this is revolving money in, in the business accounts. So. Of course, there's money in there for all things that are needed, you know, saying some materials, labor, infrastructure, phone bills. Whatnot. Why did it decrease from 1.5 million years to where we are today? Um, frankly, because my wife passing away was a huge factor. Mm, okay, there we go. Um, the last year before she passed away, excuse me, uh, was a, was a, it was just a very tough time. The last two or three years right there, uh, we had worked so hard on something and, you know, I, I risked a lot to do that because the situation that she was in, my wife had muscular dystrophy. She was full time in a power wheelchair. So our lives were not what most people would consider normal. So sure. what I did was I made our abnormal normal and we acted as if it, a lot of things that most people would worry about, we would just not worry about. You know, so if we had an opportunity to go to a national and I didn't have the cash at the time, but the mortgage money was sitting there, we went to the national. The mortgage money. Taking money from the... Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But, you know, here's the thing. A mortgage payment can be made up. That, wow. that, na that national is never coming again. You're, it, the most valuable thing that we have, and, and I know that we're going to clash on this, Caleb, because I know how you... You're, I can see the, your, your wheels are turning. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is I'm, I'm a risk taker, right? And I see value in things greater than money, and I, and the, and I believe that the most valuable thing that we own and we give it away for free every day or at a cheap rate is our time. Time is the only thing that you're ever going to have in this life that you cannot get back. Money, sure. you can lose it. You can get it back. Love, you can lose it. You can get it back. A child, you can lose them. You can make another one. Your time, once it's gone, it is gone. No, I mean, I, I do vibe with that because that is correct. I, this channel is finance-based, so a lot of people think, you know, money over everything when it comes to what I think. No, I, I think that's 100% correct. Like, time is something you can't get back. I just believe also in a balance. Right. Making sure that the finances... I'm not telling place. you that this is the way to do things for yeah. sure, bro. <laughs> you know, but given my circumstances at the time, you know, knowing how I made money. See, most people, they can't even handle running a business because they need structure. They need to know that that paycheck's coming in sure. every Friday or the 15th and the first of every month. They need that. And that's how they balance. And there's a lot of value. You can make less money and be more effective by having that consistency, right? Because you know what's coming in, so you can have that balance. But you're never going to get a $250,000 paycheck that way. Let me get an understanding of your wealth then real quick. Okay. What is in your checking account right now? <laughs> your personal checking account. Pennies. Okay. What is in your savings, personal savings? I mean, I, no, there's no cash. What are in your in the stock market? Um, I had some crypto, and I may have some stocks that I haven't looked at in a long time. Oh boy. How much do you think? I don't know. The crypto is probably a couple hundred bucks maybe, and it was more than that, man. I sold a bunch of Litecoin at 80 bucks before it went to like 400 or whatever. <laughs> you know, but, but the thing was is I... 
I played it right. I went by the 30% rule. I sold it at a 30% gain. Can't lose, right? Well, but, at least you made money. Yeah, you know, yeah, it is what it is. But Well, okay, so how much equity do you have in properties? Um, you know, nothing. Oh, that's the one thing I was, I well, was hoping for. I was hoping for. I walked for away it. from my house when my wife passed away. You know, one of the things was is the crazier things got for us, you know, and you call it reckless. You know, I did what I did to make the things that were bad happening around us in our world stay at bay because, you know, you know, there was times when we had money and we would go do things. Mm -hmm. But once I committed to something, you know, with, with my son's motocross, I literally went out about that as if it was a career, a job, and we were a professional team. So and I was, does he make money off of that right now? Um, yes, he can. He's not like, okay. um, he's not like one of the guys going to the big supercross on TV. Well, I was just curious he, if the investment paid off in terms of return. The investment paid off in a lot of ways. It hasn't paid off in the money. He, he does go make money. Yes. You okay. know, he can go out every weekend and make money racing. But <clears throat> the problem is it's a very expensive sport. Yeah. So unless you have sponsors that are paying for everything and let you keep your winnings, you really have a hard time because whatever you make racing, you basically put back in for the next weekend of racing. If not, and that's if you win or don't get hurt or you don't break something. So it was it was one of those things that I did because it separated him from everybody else in the world. You know. So and at the at the peak of making 1.5 million in the business, how much would then come into your hands from that 1.5? I mean, that would be a gross. You know, so that yeah. was you know everybody's payroll and everything. You know, I would do 400 probably. Oh, three, that's still incredible. What scares me is we're at 57. We were having 400 thousand dollars a year pre taxes, but there's zero right now. I'm I'm just I'm a little nervous because. I was, and very and, and I was spending it. I mean, I'm telling you, I was spending it, buddy. And that's Just, what it came down to. I was like, you know, we were investing it in motocross, motorcycles, tires, trips. Man. And I was trying to build a career for him. And there's there's more to it. It hasn't, it hasn't paid off, but it's not done either. Because there's another leg to this whole thing that I've been... There's a master plan, right? And it's crazy, right? But it's something I've been working on for a long time. And Do you want to tell us? I mean, well, yeah, I mean, you know, moving myself from being just a worker, right, which I'm really good at, you know what I'm saying, but to being, you know, bigger than that, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and in several different ways, I've, I've reached out to it in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, Moto was one of the biggest ways. We went from being a beginner to somebody that is feared and, and respected. He went to Loretta Lynn's, which is a huge feat. It's probably the hardest thing he could ever endeavor to do. She guys didn't make... Money from the return, though. The return, to would, be clear. The, the, well, yeah, it, it was would, more time. It would experience. make money, and it will, because this whole business ties into that, right? Because of the, one of the other legs, the health and nutrition one. Yeah, okay. because you know it treats injuries at, at the cellular level, and it also improves recovery time by seventy percent with a pre-treatment, pre-workout treatment. You'll be back on the bike 70% faster. If you work out, if you build muscle, you know, bodybuilder, you'll be back in the gym 70% faster. Um, I want to get this thing right now, right? Because this has to take care of me and my wife. For the the nutrition thing the, to yes. confirm. Okay. Yes. Uh, I want to make sure, yeah, that I'm putting names to what we're talking about. Because you've definitely been in a lot of different ventures. Um so, okay, a couple things that are like, I love that you're a hard worker. I love that you're supporting this, uh, your son. And you talked about being really good at working. I think a muscle that we need to build is being really good with money yeah, as well. I agree. Zero dollars to your name at 57 scares me. 52. 52. Sorry. Oh, I wrote 57. I'm sorry. It's all right. I, I probably forgot that little final Don't put leg. five on me yet, man. Well, no, no. That actually does make a difference because, okay, well, I was thinking like upper 50s, like, okay. I mean, I'm not <laughs> trying to think how to say this. What if things do start hurting in the 60s? Because construction is so manual, and that's like you're easy, you know. If you need yeah, to go get money, do? you know how to do that. What, what are you going to do with zero dollars? And then your known income source that you can take advantage of us There's is There's not going to be a lot you. that you're going to be able to do with no dollars, for sure. And I've th this is one of the reasons that I've been working as hard as I am right now because, you know, after 35 years of construction, my body, you know, they say you're as good once as you ever was. I'm better than I've ever been. Good. Once, 
right? Oh. And I don't need the third or fourth time because that one time it's going to take care of it, right? Yeah. But I can't, you know, my, my body's changed. There's injuries and stuff that come with time, you know? Yeah. So I can't go out there and beat things together with a hammer no more. Mm-hmm. And when you're framing houses, which is one thing that I'm really, really good at, and I'm really, really good at math and the mathematics of it, and I do a lot of ma- most math in my head, and that's something I can do. But there's going to be days that I'm the only person standing on that slab and there's a pile of lumber over there that's 15 foot high by 40 foot long yeah. and it has to go over here and mm-hmm. I can't do it. I mean, and, and I'm not going to. So, okay, so what's the, what's the plan then if we can't do that? And luckily there is more time now because 52. Uh, but if something bad were to happen, an injury of some kind, what do we do? Because I don't want you to be homeless. Do you have, you, you had a home, you sold the home, do you have ownership in any property right now? Um, not that's, not that's, I mean, not that I know of that I would have a deed to that's in my name. Okay. What's your living situation right now? <laughs> um, we're holding out in our house. I filed an appeal on the eviction. Um, we are, uh, I mean, we're uh, renting electricity from our neighbor, which is very nice. That's another thing that happened that was so stupid. You know, last year, I got a bill in January for $2,200 for our electric bill. Okay. And I, th- there's a lot of things that, that, that happened that kind of led to the situation. But I call them up. I'm like, how can I have a $2,200 electric bill? Did you guys sign up for the energy rates plan, though, where it's like supply said, and demand for the energy they rates? Said, they said, sir, you haven't made a payment since... Oh. <laughs> February of last year, and I said, horse hockey. I said, it's on auto pay. Never heard of All horse right. hockey before. That's a new one for me. Well, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> At one time, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. And yes, yeah, you were right a, to fight it, but that should not have even been. And it was part of that equation. Well, that shouldn't have been something that made or break you, though, because you should, should have had. I should have had the money. Right well established emergency fund at the very least. Well, I made a mistake, I guess, doing this project for my from my friend who passed away and the fact that I let my friendship get involved. And so normally I would never do anything without my, my contract is pretty solid Mm -hmm. in my construction company. And, you know, we're remodeling a trailer, you know, during the COVID, I can't get anybody to go to Lavernia to work on a trailer, you know, so I wanted a hundred thousand dollar remodel of a trailer. Dude, it was, I would have charged her 450,000 for a trailer. First of all, she had a seventy or eighty thousand dollar water remediation claim, which re- which involved removing insulation, two feet of sheetrock up, repairs, and all that stuff, flooring, you know, all I, that. I would just walk away because that doesn't make it's sense. It's a Sheridan trailer. trailer. A brand new Sheridan was about two hundred eighty, two hundred ninety thousand. By the time you finance it, they so, go down in value typically. Though I told her, I gave her, I gave her options, you know. But we went through and we replaced every window. We replaced every interior door. We replaced 100% of the flooring. We gave her a bathroom model because my friend who was sick in a wheelchair was going to have to move into this bathroom. So we, we ADA'd the bathroom for him. We completely remodeled it. And so, yeah, you know, back in 2000, we estimated remodel jobs in an average of about $150 a square foot down in the San Antonio area. All right. Homes were selling for anywhere from 105 to $126 a foot for a normal house. Okay. So a remodel has to cost more right out of the gate. So if I'm going to go bid a job and look at it, a remodel, I got to think, okay, well, we're going to start with 150 a foot. All right. That was in 2000. What is it in 2022? It's 250 to $300 a square foot. Okay. All right. So we're looking at $450,000. No, Have you ever had an emergency fund? A business emergency fund? I've had, yeah. yeah. What happened? Why'd that just no why'd that just stop? I mean, this year basically everything has been about getting this into the position to start this company. How much did this machine cost for this company? And it's forty thousand dollar machine. Okay. So forty thousand again, that shouldn't be that is that's ten percent of what you'd bring in on a year. I mean I would so that shouldn't I mean, be and for me the machine should make fifteen hundred dollars a day. Oh, I hope so. But let's look at your business checking account right now. Uh, I'll tell you, negative one thousand one hundred eighty-three dollars. Mm-hmm. So I'm, um, no, we're we're looking at zero dollars across all the accounts, and then all of a sudden we have negative in here. Yeah, and we're actually negative in a couple personal accounts. And oi, oi, okay. So okay. I told you I'm a case, brother. I'm a case. 
What are these deposits in from your share 81 transfer funds via mobile? So I have several accounts. And so I would boost cash flow to look better <laughs> by moving, moving money around. And then on top of that, this lady, she never wrote a check to my company all year long. She kept writing checks to my name. And so you'd have to deposit it in then for yourself. Yeah. And move it over from my personal account. It was a pain in the ass. And well, it's put her in a bad position because now, you know, my company would never receive any payment, but that's another issue. (laughs) So of the third 27 that went in, a lot of it was just from you, if not all of it. And then you were taking out like a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, just money just being transferred back and forth. But we're ending with negative a thousand one hundred eighty three dollars. Of which $102 for this period were overdraft fees. Mm-hmm. 204 year to date overdraft fees. Yeah, I know. That was a big thing. So we're just losing money. And they actually refunded a bunch of them into this account that, that helped me correct it back to the 1100 right. or whatever it was upside down. I'm not sure which month you're looking at, but. Um, October to November, it looks like. Yeah, that's, and then they, so it was like 20, it was like over $2,000 upside down. And they, they refunded all kinds of fees and all kinds of stuff to me. And, and, and a lot of it is, I mean, it's, it's frivolous, stupid spending, you know? Um, what, like on what? Because it was kind of hard to tell where I was when it was. Well, this, what are the frivolous this whole things? year basically was funding us being down out of town, you know, living in a hotel room. And working on this other project. And that's where most of our money went this year. How long did you live in a hotel? Oh, shoot. I had, well, I had, uh, I think I had like 50, 60,000 Bon Voy points. It was like 40, <laughs> 40 days or something like that. Um, okay. And, you know, being out of town, fuel back and forth, whatnot. Um you know, it's just expenses, man. And, you know, I've got an old lady. She doesn't work, really, you know. And so, you know, last year, you know, her son was sick and she was in San Antonio. I couldn't be there. I had to fund a lot of that, you know, just fuel back and forth. Where's she staying? What's food? What not? You know, and then she came back. She had to finish up school, which she started. So, you know, she hasn't really brought in an income on her own in several years. And so I'm paying for all of that, too. And if, if I don't know if you know anything about you know, having, you know, a wife all the time, but they need their hair done and their nails and their eyelashes and stuff like that. And, and, you know, believe it or not, I consider that stuff to be frivolous expenses. Yes, that's frivolous. They get right. a lot. Of course but I'm here to tell you what, if you live with a woman, you need her to have that shit because otherwise she's a raging maniac and you might as well not live with her. So it's a choice well, about, you know, one poison over another and, okay. and, and, and finding well, ways, is, finding ways to educate her on the way to make it, more cost effective. That's about being on the same page for right. goals. I'm, you know, the thing is, is when she came here, you know, she had a certain idea about the way things were. And I made, you know, I have the ability to joke, man, I'm a, I'm, I work magic. You know what I'm saying? I can just kind of like, most of the time, kind of like, just kind of make stuff happen. You okay. Know I mean? You know. When well, because you're, because you're going to debt. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I could sit around, for, well, I always brag, I could sit around and do nothing and make, come up with $1,500 a week. You know what I'm saying? Just, by who I know, what I'm doing, you know, connections that I've made over the years and, and whatnot, you know, a little job here, a little job there. But that's not going to pay for anything today, you know. Do when you have I was credit living, karma on your phone? I do, I do. And yeah. I have, um, what's the other one, Experian I was using. Can you open credit karma for me? Sure. It will not be on screen, but um, I'll take a look. But starting over, you know, and... You know, walked away from my house, walked away from all this stuff, walked away from this, that, all kinds of stuff, you know. I oh, left so okay. much I mean, I left stuff in the so. house, bro. I just couldn't deal with it, you know. After she passed away and I was in there in the house, I couldn't do anything. I just couldn't, I couldn't package anything. I couldn't grab anything. Well, I couldn't. That's was, fair. And, you know, I grabbed what I could and I left. And, you know, I was in more or less the same equity position I was in when I moved into the place. It was up for foreclosure. I was going, I was in the process of filing a bankruptcy at the time to save the house. Uh. And when she passed away, I, I thought to myself, well, it's going to cost me $4,000 a month just to keep the house and no other expenses alone. Do I really want to do that? 
And I chose to ignore the freaking the bankruptcy and walk away from the house because I didn't really have any equity in the house. Uh, now, if I'd have held onto the kept house, taking liens against it. Well, we kept uh, we kept remortgaging it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you know the thing was is three of those remortgages were like the government programs. One went down to like one point seven percent interest and. My wife, what she would do is every time that we would get into a jam, she'd push it to the point, and then she would refinance the house. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, we're working, for, we're working with a different set of rules. I'm looking, you know, I have a wife that's probably not going to live another 50 years. She's, oh. you know, oh. And, you know, we're in trying to, man, you know, you don't have tomorrow. And I know where you're going, right? Yesterday is gone. You're not going to get it back. <laughs> tomorrow, you don't have that either. It's not promised. All you have is right now. And so the right now that I had for those 17 years... Mm -hmm. was different than anybody else's, right? Sure. And it probably left me in a position overall that I probably wouldn't have been in with different circumstances. Well, let's think about right now. Yeah. Where are we at today? Today. 414 credit score. I know. I had it at 650 or 670 just which, last year. Which is average yeah. at best. But I could get this money. Is, you could get money at 670, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. So payment history, 95%. So we're missing payments on something. You yeah. missed a payment from Lendmark Financial Services, and it's currently late. Yes. Uh-oh, and then we have three missed credit card payments there, two missed credit card payments there, and two missed credit card payments on Capital One. Mm -hmm. When those cards, and see, that's just happened because all those credit cards, I used them, like, I would use them, pay them off. Use them, pay them off. Use them, pay them off. But then, you know, coming back here in September with a, you know, dead stop and no income, those bills, they gradually fell off as the money ran out. And then you don't really have the highest um, uh, caps on these cards, 300 for Capital One. Right. But your utilization is 141%. And then another this Capital One, 500. Utilization of 118%. And then Credit One Bank cap of 950, but 110 utilization on that. And then 62% on the 650. I would use those card. cards to, because I have a diesel truck. It costs about, you know, 150 to $200 to fill it up, depending on what fuel is. So, you know, those cards, I would use them until they were maxed. And as soon as they were maxed, I would send them the money. And then usually with Credit One and with Capital One, they give you an automatic reboot, like three to five times a month, right? I think one of them's three, the other one's five times. So I would literally get an instant, the $500 instantly back on. So, but it was constantly, you know, showing, you know, maxed out, which doesn't look good for the overall credit. And then something about, Paying this other, I don't know. I did, I, like I said, man, I don't know if I want you to have credit because I don't know if I want you to have debt ever again. Because we also have thousand one hundred sixty three dollars in Sunrise uh, collections, and then two thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars in National Credit Systems. I mean, what's very clear is that credit is not for you. It just doesn't doesn't work for you. Yeah, and you yeah. don't use it well. <laughs> I mean, you're not paying your things, and we have 20 accounts open. So, this is, so yep, and they're all late. It's, it's one of those things where it hasn't really been my job, you know, and, and so now I'm failing at it, you know, so. And we have a car loan as well. Well, mm -hmm. it's your truck loan, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, I had a re yeah, repossession and another repossession. And, Dude. Uh, and yeah. this is only 4% paid off. When did you get this truck? Which one? The Your $10,000 loan. Oh, you're talking about the Dodge? Is it? I'd probably, yeah, it doesn't yeah. tell me what it is. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I had to refinance it to stay in it, and then that was about the September time. Yeah, and I see it closed off that other loan when you did that. So Yeah, so, so I mean... What's the interest rate on this? It's probably high, probably 13 to 20 or something like that. Ah, oh, buddy. Okay. But, you know, again, here's, you know, in my experience, you know, I'm one big job away from being, you know, back to even. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, I don't know, though, because... I, this is where I'm going to be a little hard on you, but mm -hmm. I don't know though, because you've been one big job away from being even forever. But right now we're negative. It's just constantly one it's debt and then cover it with the job and then debt and cover it with the job. What there is not is anything getting you over the hump of being able to survive long term. Mm -hmm. I am so nervous for what happens 10 years from now at 62. Social Security is not going to be enough oh, no, in this no, area, no. especially. No. That's, I mean, that's going to be terrible. And then there's all these debts and collections and things you're missing. And then the car, the terrible interest. Oh, so 2,455 in credit cards. That's actually not crazy. But the utilizations are insane. Yeah. 4,051 in collections. That's not great. And then 9,993 in auto loans from that 15 to 20% interest. Right. 
And mm-hmm. basically a 400 credit score. It's so about 30,000 on the surface. This company, and you weren't able, because you didn't have any money, you weren't able to open the store. You had to get your deposit back or whatever. No, 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 no. no. This is what I'm saying is she let me move in and we opened the store. So I've done all the remodeling. Okay. I mean, I've, the store's built. Store is built. So where are we ready. at today besides that? We're working on getting customers in the door. One of the type of things, it's Christmas okay. time. We started this thing and then word of mouth, not having money for marketing. You know what I'm saying? The Have you made any sales? We've made a few sales, but not enough to count for anything. Like I had a friend of ours came in and she did 15 treatments. That money was absorbed. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. um, so what's your business strategy surrounding this? If you could go into that a bit, because this is a very different world than construction. It is a very different world of construction. I've been, uh, you know, studying this for a good while. And my wife, you know, we basically have a health. It's not health, beauty and wellness. My wife is a licensed esthetician. So we have several thousand dollars worth of estheticians equipment in there ready to do facials and waxing and whatnot. We're missing a few things. We've got to get customers in there. Okay. The red light machine itself, basically, if I can show people what it is, they will come and, you know, I signed, you know, so for, you know, it's basically, uh, if you broke it all apart, it's about 175 to $200 per treatment, but we offer packages that reduce that cost. So, you know, I come in and if I could sell four packages a day, you know, how long does it take me to, you know, to, to balance that company? Well, you know? We have the ifs we sell. Now, Can you tell me about your customer acquisition strategy? That's where we've been having a problem because okay. um, first, I was told one thing, and this is one thing I learned in motocross, because I kept trying to figure out what the rules were, and people would tell me this guy, this official would tell me this, and this parent would tell me that, and I was like, I got to the point, I was like, you know what, screw this shit, I went and got the AMA rule book, I read it front to back, so I knew exactly what they were saying, and if I have any questions, I have a top AMA official that was a friend of mine, I would call him with a direct question about the exact statement that it said and how it directly affected us, and I would get the answer. So learning that, you know, I've I've done a lot of research about this company. We went in with the Facebook, and the Facebook has completely changed. This whole new meta thing basically was changing and had come to perdition about the time we're starting this. A completely unfamiliar pro- platform that doesn't work for anything we're doing. Everything we're doing is not working. We put a bunch of money into it, probably twelve, fourteen hundred dollars into getting the marketing, getting the ads pages set up, and getting all this, and paying for for ads that were getting rejected, for boost posts that don't do no good, and just completely. They Why were they rejected? Um, uh, racial things is what they would say, but you can't say anti aging. I can't say oh, okay. weight loss. So they're trying to prevent like non-scientific medical pronouns have to stuff. be right. Okay, and they are not joking. I've got to say stuff like I can't say like wrinkle removal. I got to be like, is the treatments that you're using not working for you? Try us at Ultimate Red Light. Well, okay? are are they trying to just prevent like a, a, false a, medical? Offending. Well, false medical stuff. Like usually when I talk about the aging right, right. and stuff like that, we get into a, a lot of worlds of false promises. They're, they have a lot. I mean, their parameters of why they're trying to do whatever they're doing, you know, I mean, I get it because now if you just have your Facebook page, you can go put whatever you want on your Facebook page. Right now, if you put something on there that's offensive, they might flag you and put you in jail for a couple of days. Right now, if you're going to pay them to run an ad like a commercial on Facebook, your rules are different. Mm-hmm. So that's, to me, that's would be a vital thing to drive business to us right away. What about handing out coupons to it in front of gyms and stuff like that? You know, that's a great idea. Um, going out and putting out flyers on cars at HEB and whatnot. It's a- aggressive. It's organic. It's a low percentage return. And a lot cheaper, though. It is a For lot a company cheaper. that doesn't have money. You know, I'm into roofing sales, and I've been doing roofing sales for a long time. So that You're into I, everything. I would go <laughs> to a neighborhood with a 1,000 homes in it and knock every door. Walk the whole street up and down, park my car at the other one, and walk the whole neighborhood, knock every door. We call it getting our teeth kicked in because people are like, yeah, they're not happy to yeah. see you. Does this business have debt that is not seen on your credit? Ultimate Red Light is debt-free. Good. Do you think... She's a virgin. She's a virgin still, yeah. Do you think that it made 
Do you think it was a bad business decision to open a business when there was no money to open the business? Um, most people would say yes. Do I think it was? No, because my dad said, he goes, son, don't you think this is a bad time to open a business? Everything that's going on right now. It's like, you know, is there a good time, dad? Do you know which time is good? When you have the money to at least support it for well, a year. Well, you think ideally, you know. If so most you, companies don't make a profit within the first year. No. A lot no. of physical businesses. You know, I was Me able too. to. I don't, I don't fold myself like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe. I believe. But you say you're facing an eviction right now. You obviously need some kind of money to come in. Why are you being evicted? Um, because we haven't paid our rent. Okay. For yeah, how long? That's big uh, since September. Justifiable, justifiable reason to mm. not pay rent or justifiable mm. reason to evict someone. I mean, right. not paying rent, well, so. you know, my landlord came to me and, and raised my rent $650 a month. Two weeks after he saw I bought this $40,000 machine, I'd asked him, I said, you know, <clears throat> do you have any buildings around here that I could rent to start this business? So he drove me around, took me to a real scummy place. And I said, bro, I can't bring ladies from Lakeway into a place like this. And Three weeks later, you know, he raises my rent $650, and I just bought this machine for $40,000, costing me an extra $1,500 a month. I'm getting hit with an electric bill that's outrageous and retarded. And so a lot of things were going on at the same time, plus my just just a lot of dramatic things in my life. And well, that's why it was bad to take out mortgages on multiple mortgages on your home earlier and making sure that you just kept that single mortgage on a home, you mm-hmm. own the home, rent would not go up because the mortgage is what the mortgage well, yeah. is. I would just rent the house out. And believe me, that would be... You know, well, not even idea. that, but you wouldn't have to worry about this. But it is the landlord, especially in Texas. I mean, agree with it or disagree with it when it comes to morals, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. Yeah. Legally, he can do what he did. That's hey, fine. Right. But now it's your hey. responsibility and you're being right. evicted. No. And then you're starting a business with no money and you can't pay your rent. What are you going to do when you are inevitably evicted? Where do you live? Okay, what so, you know, I guess I have a couple of, um, you know, things that I've got to get over in the fact that these choices are just not going to be made because in order to rent a place inside of Austin, unless you're going to share an apartment with somebody, you're looking at at least $2,000 a month. That's not true. There's places in Austin. There's places by like, okay, sorry, this is going to be very location based for many people who don't live in Austin, but uh, near out that area, four points. I know someone who had an apartment, a one bedroom apartment out there, one bedroom, you know, not great, Mm -hmm. but it was a nice little place. It was like 900 bucks a month. That's not bad. No, it's not. So and you do not need a minimum. My, my question then it would be where do I park my 38 foot of a motor home and my 30 foot show hauler, my flatbed trailer, my two job trailers, all of my tools, and all of that stuff is going to add up to, you know, another, you know, quite a bit. Storage units are expensive. Well, my answer would be an answer you wouldn't like, but it's showing that clearly you just can't have it and would need to sell it. Right. And so that's what I've been doing. Basically, I've been clearing out a lot of stuff that's been because it's too much baggage to carry around. You know, I don't plan on continuing, you know, I don't don't need five nail guns. I don't need four compressors. I don't need that stuff. So I've been pushing that stuff, equipment out, pushing that money back into the business. And again, like I said, you know, it's a foolish plan, but you know, my thinking is this, it's either going to work or it's not. And it really doesn't matter because, Why? But because I'm, I'm in the situation. Well, I, well, we're going to, I'm not going to die tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to get off that easy. I don't think, but, and again, that's just, you know, <laughs> hypothetical, but <clears throat> I know what I'm capable of kind of thing. And yeah. If I have to jump through hoops on fire, I jump through hoops on fire. And I, I get it. Right now, it makes about as much sense as, you know. But you have thirty to $40,000 of really bad debt to pay off. Mm-hmm. And there's more than that. What, what's more? Um, I've got some legal issues. and uh, <clears throat> Well, you don't have to go into those, but can you tell us the number? Oh, that's probably 20. Okay. So we have like. We have a lot, is mm-hmm. what we have. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have some ACHs and some other stuff like that as well that we're taking out. This, last why year. can't you just focus again on this construction thing that I was bringing in 1.5? Um, I mean, I could. Why don't you? Um, because I don't want to. Ah, because you don't want to. This business here, this ultimate red line, it's not just the shop there. This is just the breaking of the ice, the tip of the iceberg. One of the things I haven't told you is the wellness program is a membership that's built on a a thing called dynamic compression. It's not a pyramid system, but I'm a distributor in that company. Platinum executives make eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a month. Uh, Hearing the word platinum executive makes me very much think of the shape pyramid. Well, yeah, and it does, but it's not because in the pyramid system, if the person in front of you, if the the if the person in front of you falls down, then you're dead. You're right. You got to go re a night. So, if I sign you up underneath me, 
And for some reason, I decide, mm, I'm not going to do this anymore. Let my membership go. You just go right to the person that was over me, right? And if you want, your business can pass my business up. If you do three times the sales, you can go from a manager to a platinum executive. Well, I'm still just a silver manager by just your own sales. Now, so what's, what's, what's the, t- who's the person above you? What's their title? I can't remember what Lisa's title is. She's a, uh, she's, <laughs> I know that. We'll uh, call her boss. Yeah. I mean, Jesse Joe now, is, a, she, is our team leader. She probably, she's three years. She's $30 million. Okay. She she's, probably has, uh, she has you under her, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she probably has a couple under others, right? Oh, in order to be a platinum executive, you've got hundreds. Of, um, and, and see, so you have people underneath you have people underneath them. Oh, okay. So there are going to be people under you. Yes. And then for the other people under your imagine, boss. Imagine five and five and five oh. and five and five and five. So. And five and five and five and five and five. And then those five are going to have ten. Sometimes, oh, you know. Hold on, hold on. I don't, don't lose track of me. <laughs> so the others have another under them. So. Yeah. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of an example here. I do believe that if you do... <sighs> oh, and, and yeah, it's a triangle. But, yeah, right, and, and, and I get it. By definition, though, is what I'm saying. is a triangle or a pyramid strategy. Do, in, in essence, if one falls down, everybody below it falls down. And this one, they, it is, for say, a pyramid in structure, but they call it dynamic. What, what are you selling? Uh, wellness program, which is a... It's um. It's a supplement package that's 100% USA made, non-GMO. They're medical grade supplements that back known diets that make them sustainable, make them a lifestyle. Okay. Um, yeah, you're in a pyramid scheme. It's not a oh, scheme. No. Okay, but okay, it's a multi-level marketing. If I could give you a system that I could guarantee you, I'll pull fifteen pounds off of you. Look, check it out. I'll pull fifteen pounds off of you in eight days. All right. If I get you in a system, it's a forty-five day money back, one hundred percent money back guarantee. It's empty bottle. Okay, that means you have to use the stuff and you have to follow the thing. If you don't have the success that you want after forty-five days, you'll get your money back a hundred percent. And I'm so strong about it, even though I don't have any money, I'll pay you back too. That's how much I believe in it. You wouldn't be able to. So, well, right now, well, if I get you to buy a system, and we, well, I'll tell you what, if, if you're going to want your money back, then we're, you're not going to get your money back because you're not going to need it. <laughs> it works, bro. It works. And so, what are these people under you? What, what are you selling to them to be under you for them to sell? So, you know, our packages, you know, they start out around $500 and they range any lower from that all to probably 150 different individual products, including the number one thermogenic fat burner on the so market. So do you supply the products to them and then they have to sell the products or what, what is it? Actually, I sell them um, their program. And then I become their coach in the system. And as a coach, I have resources. I'm on a team. That team has uh, resources and people that, you know, a support group, like a Facebook page that has all the recipes you could ever think about, you know, that are going to be in line with our dieting. Um, a, 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 a support page, a support page that with women mostly, because women are the ones that usually do these diets, right? And men don't really give it about their figure until they realize it can I be do. easy right I mean, and you know what if I could show you how it can be easy you're going you're gonna to love it <clears throat> but the thing is is these middle aged women love to answer questions about this so if you go on there it's like hey look I'm having trouble with this or I'm having trouble with that you got 10 of these girls that are your friends or guys or whoever helping you through the system, right? So that you're not just lost with a problem or understand that there's something that you're going to have to go through because a lot of people don't understand, you know, that, hey, you're going to poop. You know, if you're 80 pounds overweight and you want to lose some weight and when you go to lose that weight, you're going to poop a little more irregular than you did before because it has to go somewhere. It doesn't just disappear, right? That can't be a problem for you. Some people have a problem. Well, shoot, I have a job. I can't go to the bathroom every 10 minutes. Okay. So then you need to change your structure. Every 10 minutes? Some people have different problems. Women are weird, bro. All right. Anyways, but so 52 years old, a part of a pyramid scheme, no money to retire, 50 to $60,000 in really bad debt. What does the next 10 years look like, please? Because I don't think I'm going to be able to convince you to do what I would do. But tell me what the next well, 10 I mean, years looks like. The thing you. about it is, is I can always do construction. So I can make a living doing construction, deal with my debts. There's ways to get in Why don't you just do it and get rid of the debts and then save up enough money for construction or for retirement? Well, which I think is going to be hard with because, 10 years. Um, 
man, if you knew the business, you'd understand. It's, it's, a, it, you know, no matter what job I do for anybody, no matter how badass I am, at some point in that job, those people are going to freaking hate me. Not because I'm bad at my job. Not because I made a mistake. Everyone not hates because, contractors. That's fine. Uh, and at the end of the day, I'm in their house. Okay? And I'm not going to be liked again until three or four months after I'm done with that project. And those people are sitting around in their house and they're going to go, man, that guy really did a good job. But do you have any idea the heartaches and headaches and bullshit that I had to go through to finish the project while they hated Personally, me? Personally, I don't care because you have a lot of debt and no retirement. Well, I mean, it is what it is. It's what like, takes priority? What takes priority is my dreams and my future. Okay. And so the construction is the past. It's something I've done for 35 or 40 years. For me, reality takes priority, though. We need to get rid of debts. Mm-hmm. We need to have money to be able to retire because whether we all, whether we like it or not, all of us at some point are going to be in a physical position, unless it's just a random thing where we drop that, where we can't do the work that we need to do, that we're trained to and do. See, that's that why, gonna, and that's the main reason that I'm going into this wellness business because I need this equipment to treat myself for the injuries that I put myself through. <laughs> and on top of that, I believe in this wellness package that we sell that you know you refer to as a pyramid scheme. It's not really a scheme, and I I, I want to show it to you, and you can take a look at it. You know, it's like saying, well, I mean, I guess a K car represents every car in the world. It doesn't. A K car was the biggest mistake that freaking Dodge ever made, Plymouth. But you know, Leah Coca, he was a great guy, right? He was really smart. Anyways. I want you to have a conversation with Mark Cuban. Oh, I'd love to. He (laughs) would have things to say. Either way, I have a hard time. If I ever hear anything medical, especially diet related, is Mm -hmm. 100% guaranteed. That means I immediately don't believe it. And see, I don't believe 100% guarantee is the proper word. It's a money back. So if it doesn't work for you, then you're going to get your money back. I'm not guaranteeing you that it's going to work. I'm just guaranteeing you that if it doesn't work, my company and I feel so strongly about it that there's something else that we overlooked for you that we need to go back and pay attention to. And it's worth it for us to give you that system to keep good graces with you so that we give us a chance to look at it because there's a couple things that can affect weight loss other than just having the proper diet. If you have a bad, if you have a thyroid problem, it doesn't matter what you do with your diet. It has nothing to do with that. You are not going to lose weight until you get your thyroid adjusted. I have a thyroid problem. That's what's wrong with me. Well, I mean, not Panda Express thyroid. Well, most people have a Panda Express problem. I have a Panda Express problem. But I have, if we miss this with you, Right. We're going to take care of you because we don't want you to, we want you to have success. We're building you up for success. We don't believe in failure. It's just, it's just either a missed opportunity or something we didn't take into account, but we're going to hit the mark as long as we keep firing at it. Now, it might be time to start believing in failure though. Mm, well, failure is something that the people uh, that were successful in the world made up so that we could all feel like we're less worthy you know, the Rockefeller. I don't think anyone's the, necessarily less worthy, the but there's definitely those who make it and those who do not. And, and people, those who just stay stagnant, which is fine as well. So, okay, here, here's, the, here's the thing. I mean, I'm going to wrap it up because there's, I mean, there's anything I would say. I mean, that's not going to be done. That's very clear. But I'm going to be a little brutal here for a second, then I'll it. give you the final word. Go for it. Thank you. 52. I think it's 62. Uh, you might still be in the pyramid or not. I don't know. I don't think you're. I think you're still going to be in debt. It's probably going to be different debt than the debt you have today. Maybe. I yeah. think you'll probably be in a situation where you're in a pretty crappy apartment because you've been evicted from this place, or you're just in your RV, unfortunately, and you're trying to figure out how to retire. Social Security, Medicare will start taking care of you, but it won't be enough to survive, especially in an area like this. You'll have all these different kind of debts, and I think at that point, this. I think this business. Uh, with its customer acquisition issues and the being the fact that it's in a pyramid, I don't think it's going to work. And I think you're not going to have anything, anything, anything saved for retirement. And I think it's going to be a really bad and sad remaining decades once we hit retirement. That sucks. I hate that I just said that. I feel like the worst person in the world, but that is what I'm envisioning in the real world. That is what I am envisioning. And I hope, I hope that I am the most wrong person in the world right now. Mm-hmm. I really do. But I can see nothing but that. You, you can know, have the final word. Caleb, I can't disagree with you because there's one thing that I believe in, and it's the truest thing in, in our world is math, Right. One and one are always going to equal two. I mean, it's never going to change. And if it does, somebody's lying to you, right? It doesn't matter how you go about the equation. If you want to go around your elbow, that's fine. You're still going to wind up at two. But I believe that application is not perfect. And I learned this through framing so many houses for so many years that 
the first thing that you should learn when you're going to be a carpenter at all is if you're building a house that a two by four isn't two inches by four inches just right out of the gate. It's an inch and a half by three and a half inches. And on top of that, those two by fours can vary in size. They can be three and nine sixteenths. They can be three and seven sixteenths. All right. So in application, you know, the math is perfect and you're right. And if the math works out perfectly to that end, then there's no other way it can work out. I'm counting on the things that I've learned in the, in the variances and the tolerances. I've learned that knowing your tolerance is key to success because if you operate inside the parameters that the government and life tells you that you should, you're not going to be successful. You're just going to be a slave. You know, what I do like, though, is I appreciate your, your honesty with me and I appreciate your candor and I appreciate your concern because it does concern me. It's, I don't write this off. All right. And, you know, I would appreciate your help and your guidance because it seems like you're, you, you got your eyes on some, on some things that, you know, that make perfect sense. And like I said, I believe in math. You know, I've made my career out of math. You can't build a house without knowing how to figure out the hypotenuse of the right angle, right? Most people just struggle with the decimal flipping conversion to fractions, right? I don't know why it's so difficult to break a dollar down, but some people struggle with it. <clears throat> oh, you know... I'd, I'd love to continue uh, talking to you about this more. I know you've got a certain amount of time, so, you know, I guess we'll let that go. Maybe we can come back again, talk to you or whatever, and I'd appreciate any guidance and, and advice in this new business because it's very important that it works, and I'd really like to show you our pyramid scheme a little better so that we can uh, understand it better and maybe you can see and maybe find some of the success that I've found in it. I may not be financially successful, brother, but I'm successful in a lot of other ways. And rich is just a state of mind. It's something that's in your heart. Wealth, most people will never see it. Wealth means your uncle's super rich, you know, and everything is temporary, my friend. So thank you, Caleb. Um, <laughs> rock and roll, huh? Hey. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Great conversation. All right. Well, as much as I like the dude, I'm sorry. That has to be the worst financial situation we've reviewed on this entire channel, mostly because of the age. A lot of people have been in more dire situations with debt and no retirement and stuff like that, but they were younger. They were in like the mid-20s, maybe early 30s, many decades left to rebound, take care of those situations. There's like a decade left for this. Maybe do decades if he's very healthy when it comes to, you know, working and saving up to get rid of situations and saving up for retirement so i'm not saying like he wouldn't be with us in a decade or two decades but you know just years to work very well this has to be with a oh, oh, hammer financial score with the pyramid and the, the the debts and the collections and the everything and the no money and negative negative in all accounts hammer financial score I want to say, <laughs> actually, no, you know what? Because it was negative as negatives in his account, hammer financial score, negative one, never done that. Probably will never do that again, but this was so unique. Negative one hammer financial score. And no, that negative one is not good. That is bad. Check out all the fun links in the description below. Make sure to follow the socials and subscribe.